Well, the difficult thing this time is it's not just our movie anymore. It's owned by the entire audience. And because thankfully the first movie was very successful, there's a very high level of expectation. Upon hearing terms like global illumination, subsurface scattering, and hyperreality, one may come to the conclusion that scientists are talking about a comet hurling toward Earth. When in fact, that very terminology is being used today in the making of Shrek 2. Mmm. Which showcases some of the most astonishing breakthroughs ever in computer animation. Technology has advanced in a number of ways that make Shrek 2 better, bigger, more beautiful than Shrek 1. Yeah, one of the things um, that we're trying to do is definitely we're trying to raise the bar and we want to make sure that we're um, pushing the envelope and really um, delivering something new for the audiences to see. In Shrek 2, we have a lot more human characters than we had in Shrek 1. And so we had to, we spent a lot of time kind of bringing up the level of, you know, what the human characters look like. We have actually quite a few different hair systems and ways to deal with hair and fur so that it, it looked beautiful and perfect and moved nicely. And just in general, that the, the hair would look more Believable. Shrek 2 is more intricate and more detailed in such a way that it's able to present a picture that is more realistic and you can almost walk into this movie. We spent effects time developing rain systems and moving clouds for a you know, dramatic scene where clouds roll in and snow. That really has helped a lot to bring this much higher level of kind of, of hyper-reality to our world. You don't know what it is, you just know you feel more a part of it, and, that, and that's, the, that's the goal, really. There were many things that we wanted to do in the first Shrek, particularly with lighting, that just were not really achievable on the scale that we needed to, to achieve them. There's a, a lighting technique that we have um, developed a shader for that we call subsurface scattering. Which provides a translucency level to the skin. There's another lighting technique that we call the bounce shader and this is a form of global illumination where you simulate the way light you know, bounces around just in general, not just in skin, but within a room. More fur, more hair, more water, more smoke, rain, effects, fire, all of those things that were hard and we were developing them last time, we were able to launch off from that point and develop them further this time. Shrek and Donkey and Puss get caught in a rainstorm and get soaked. I don't think that's ever been seen in a CG film before and it's, it's beautiful. So people, even though you know, we haven't seen anything between Shrek 1 and Shrek 2, they've definitely been working very hard to make sure that this is a whole new feast for the eyes. It's really great. When you see Shrek 2 and you see a mere three years later what we are able to realize of our artist's dreams and imagination in that film, it kind of takes your breath away. Computer graphics is still a relatively young industry. And together on each of these films, we try to create and invent new solutions towards the creative ambition of each film. We have an amazing partnership with HP. A couple of years ago, we signed a strategic alliance together with our companies. I think once HP got inside and understood a lot about our work process and our thought process, our creative process, it sort of opened up you know, lots of opportunities. So it's really become a good two-way street. It's going to be champagne wishes and caveat dreams from now on. <laughs> Designing the incredibly stylized look and feel of Shrek 2 requires the imagination and expertise of many talented people. As everything in an animated film must be created from scratch. To get the look of the movie going, we work in imagining what the movie will look like by painting, sketching, drawing. Wow! Character designer Tom Hester plays a key role in defining the look, utilizing research a fertile imagination, and clay to craft the film's amazingly rich characters. With a sculpture, we can kind of talk about you know, 360 degrees of, of angle there and really figure out how this character is going to look. We'll do several versions. Um, you know, we've got like 11 versions of the King character, for instance. Let's try him heavy, let's try him skinny, let's try him with a kind of you know, greasy look to him, and you know, let's try all these things but we really have to identify the character first. At that point, we'll uh, transfer all these sculptures, send them up to uh, PDI so that that can be digitized into the computer. Oh, well, let's explore that, shall we? Shrek 2 really, we always joke, is, is really like a fashion show. 
In designing character clothing that moves, wrinkles, and reacts to light like real cloth, costume designer Isis Musendan worked closely with animators in bringing a remarkable selection of wardrobe to fruition. We design everything on an animated film, the fabric, the trims, the clothing, the jewelry, the shoes. Well, they're both festive, aren't they? I think the crowds are gonna look amazing. We created fabrics that could be used a hundred times over, punching in different colors. We found every way we could to multiply and to make it more interesting visually than just the few costumes we had before. Once all the sets are built, the characters cast and the costumes created, it's the job of the production designer and art director to oversee every little detail. We have to design everything, twigs, rocks, boulders, moss on the rocks, how it grows on the rocks, forest debris. So we had different levels of things. So forest debris would be anything from pine needles to oak leaves to bark to stones. We strategically placed those in the shots to give it a more natural feel. It's fairly challenging, but I think it, it works. It gives um, Shrek a uniqueness, and that's probably what uh, part of its appeal is, too. Shrek 2 is just as amazing as, as Shrek 1 in terms of being state-of-the-art, cutting-edge technology of animation. So it's just even more of a spectacle than, than Shrek 1 was.